So for our next storyteller, I am going to invite Andreas to come up here from behind the camera and tell a story. So for Andreas Engel, everybody. Thank you. So I went to high school in Duncanville, Texas. Duncanville, Texas, just outside of Dallas. Um, think football, marching bands, and everything big, my, including my school. It was huge. Um, one of my best friends in high school, I'm going to call him Travis, uh, he was a hapless Romeo. And somehow, he managed to rope me into all his harebrained schemes at trying to get attention from girls with the hopes of getting a date with one of them. Um, and, you know, this is kind of funny and sad in some ways because the two of us were about as socially awkward as you could possibly imagine for many different reasons. And uh, we were more like the Laurel and Hardy of pickup artists. Um, one time, for instance, just to give you an example, when, uh, one time he talked me into uh, buying two dozen long stem roses and delivering them to the hi-hat team, which uh, in my, at my high school, the hi-hats were the equivalent of the rock hats. So it just kind of gives you the idea uh, of what it was like. Now. Um, now, I knew Travis because we were both French horn players in the school band. Um, but my school band was so huge, it was actually divided into three different bands. And um, he was in a different band than I was. And this, this is significant because the one girl that he really had his eye on was in my band. She was a French horn player in my band. And she was tall, beautiful, popular, long, blonde, perfect straight hair, stylish, uh, two grades above him, um, could speak French, which in Texas is not a small thing. Um, anyway, all, I mean, to Travis, she was the bomb, right? So he knew that, especially because she was an upperclassman, he was going to have to do something extra, extra special to get her attention. And he wanted me to help him. Okay. So uh, the opportunity came, actually, when uh, all three of our bands came together in our school auditorium for a rehearsal. And the way it worked was one band would go on stage do, go through its whole program while the other two bands uh, were in the audience listening. And then, and then they would cycle on, we would all cycle on and off the stage. And as you can imagine, in a high school, this was very chaotic. And it was just like, you know, musical chairs, literally. <laughs> um, and so after all the bands had played and uh, and, and most of the students had filtered out of the auditorium. Travis came bounding up to me and he's like, now it's my chance, this, this is it. And he pointed to the back and the, the girl that he had his eye on was in the back of the auditorium. And I'm like, oh God, you know, what is this gonna be? And he said, well, she lost the pearl on her ring and she's really, really upset. And he had an ear-to-ear -ear smile on his face, which I just thought was kind of funny. And he's like, you, you got to help me find this pearl. Because if we find the pearl, that's going to be it. That, that's the thing. And I looked at the auditorium, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? This is the craziest idea. And, you know, a friend in need is a friend indeed. So once again, he talked me into looking for the pearl in the auditorium. And the first thing that I noticed was the, the auditorium had a gradual slope from the back all the way down to the stage. And I thought, you know, a pearl is round, even though she was all the way in the back, maybe there's a chance that the pearl 
got kicked or whatever and might have rolled all the way down to the bottom. And so while Travis and the girl were combing the aisles in the back where she was sitting, I decided to start all the way at the bottom. And wouldn't you know it, there it was. <laughs> I mean, literally, it was probably like less than five minutes. And my heart was pounding and the pearl looked probably 10 times bigger than it actually was. And it, I mean, it probably was a big pearl, but I, I was so surprised by this that I like, I picked it up and I jumped to my feet, raised up in the air to the high heavens. I found the pearl! <laughs> and in a flash, I was covered, smothered in kisses and hugs and affection. <laughs> and, I, and, and, through the cr and I was horrified because through the crush of blonde hair against my cheek, I could see a thousand daggers coming my way. <laughs> And to Travis, uh, I was a friend no more. Aww. Yeah. Um, but, you know, years later, long after I had left Texas, um, Travis invited me to be in uh, a, a guest of honor at his wedding. He got married to a different girl. The Romeo had finally found his Juliet. And I'm proud to say I had nothing to do with it. Uh. <laughs>